working with platinum printing papers today, and this is a pin that Rob McElroy found, well, purchased on uh, through which department, or how did you come across this tin of unopened platinum papers? It came from England, from uh, an estate where a gentleman that was 103 years old had passed away, and somebody purchased it from the estate, put it onto eBay, and I was able to purchase it on eBay. On eBay. So, it's an eBay find from the UK. Anyway, it's interesting. It's been in this tin, and this tin is looking pretty rusty. So we're going to proceed with the opening of it. <clears throat> and you can tell this is the inside of the tin cover, and it looks like tin. So you can see how rusty the entire can has become. You can also see the inside, how pa well packaged it is, a cylinder, and this cylinder contains quite a bit more paper. <clears throat> so we are now removing the top piece of cardboard that's fallen apart or delaminated. Okay, we have a tin within it, and this is basically how it was packaged. Intense packaging. Okay, so. Now what I'd like you to see is, in addition to the label of tin of the patinotype company, also in, look at the paper label that indicates Black Japan Patino type paper. And I think this label is um, worth as much as the material inside it. So it's an interesting tin altogether. The, the label has both batch number and it's, in this case, it's interesting, it's R U H H H E, or some signals that could be um, Latin or. Cyrillic. Uh, size of these is also indicated as 15 by 12. And you have the number of sheets, 12 sheets. So this is a, a gold mine in terms of number and in terms of all the information provided by the uh, label on the tin. Yeah, Rob's indicating that the bottom is nicely corroded as well as there's a label probably indicating batch number. It's like a five. 577 or 544 slash something or other. So. Okay. Directions to open. Take off this cover. Let's go by the directions. Wow. Okay. This is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Nice corrosion. And as you can see, the lid reveals another lid, just like a can of sardines or a tin of sardines. Interesting. So it says here, slide the cutter towards the center of cover. So this is the little cutter point right there that's right up against the edge. Can you see it? Now, so right, right in there, that's the cutter. So the cutter, I'm going to slide out toward the middle. This is the cutter, so this needs to be slid in like that. So now... You can see that it's switched positions. It's in by about maybe two millimeters. And slide the cutter towards the center of cover as far as it will go. Replace cover. I'm going to replace the cover. As far as it will replace cover, press cutter into under lid. Turn cover round and under lid will be out out. And now it says here, round and yeah, turn cover round under lid. So we're going to start turning. Oh boy. I'm going to go backwards, and you can see we're losing some paper. I 
probably cut the cor very corroded parts, which are very easy. This is not cutting at all, not budging at all. So I'm going to lift up again and see what we've done. Okay, as you can see, we've cut from about here to about there. Uh, gosh, a little over a quarter of the circle. So now we need to do more. Yeah, you can see, if you look at really closely, you can see that that tip is actually not very strong. And it's already, you know, bent quite a bit, you know, so anyway. So we're going to bring in a little utility knife and see if we can. First piece down. Okay, good, got it. Ah, okay, there's a little, what appears to be a pack of desiccant. Hmm, interesting. Truly a little pack. And... I wish it weren't tearing as much, but it is. Okay, there we go. Ooh-wee. Okay, so the tin is emptied, and this is our roll of Japine paper with quite a bit of corrosion products in and about, and we're going to shake it out, clean up, and then we can open it up. But anyway, these are the 12 sheets of 12 by 15 black Japine Latino type paper. So now that the tube is out, we're going to open up the paper and let's see what we can do here. This is basically how it would be. Okay. Okay, good. So if you want to preserve the entire sheet, here we go. And this would be like this. And so this is. Well, it's nice that we're opening up in the summertime when the moisture content is greater and things will stay. So basically, this is your platinum paper right there. And it has a second sheet. Oh, now we see the paper. So this is the second sheet of paper and it kind of wraps into it so this is in a sense wrapping into the roll of papers to separate it from each other okay uh, this we don't need so we're gonna put this out there uh, let's proceed with this fellow no no not yet Rob I want to show something uh, this stain over here corresponds to the two corrosion stains on the wrapping paper right here that's broken, then it's overwrapped. So this is the outer, first inner, and then the second inner. So in a sense, you can see the corrosion. This is the bottom of the T. 
tin. This is where the paper was resting with the corroded bottom. Okay, so what we're going to do is, Rob, you can take that out of the way. <clears throat> and I'm just going to pull this out and open it up real good. <clears throat> okay. And another interesting thing is, <clears throat> you can see where this is the, the sensitized sheet is on the outside, and you see that the it has been compromised or damaged by being in contact with the corroding portion. Now we're going to open this up and see what we find inside. Okay, now you can see these spots right here on the lining sheet as well as on the paper. Here, here, as well as here and here. And interestingly enough, this is probably where the Oh, what do you call that? That little yes, the okay. dust. Thank you. That's this is where this material has probably affected it. It was resting on this part at one time, and then over here. So, very likely to be the case. We've noticed this before in other tins that Rob has, and as we open up, we have the paper. But you know what? I take that back. This is on the ins. This is on the inside, but this is on the outside. So this is something different. See, because this is, this is the outside, outside sheet. sheet. The outside it's sheet. Uh, the outside sheet, and it's not on the inside with the... the so I know... I, I, the circles on the inside? No, no, look at this. Okay, so I'm going to hold this down. This is the inside. I'm going to lift this up. I'll give you that. Okay, okay, good, good. Okay, and so we have stains there. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let loose of this sheet over here and see what's happening. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's similar to the staining yep. on the uh, codec. Mm -hmm. And you can see the staining is going on this side, also continuing on the second. Okay, so these are, you know, quite compromised sheets. But still, you can see that the sensitized layer is on the outside. Nicely, evenly applied. Are the spots changing at all? It seems like they're just minimizing, but they're in the same location. That's what I meant, minimizing? Yeah. yeah, just decreasing as you go out toward the other sheets. And you can see here... So it's decreasing towards the outside, outside. sheet. Correct. Which is yeah. similar to the codec paper. Yeah. And what you see here, all 12 sheets lined up. Okay. And we have found out a good number of the uh, leaves, or the platinum sheets. And as you can see, the most inner piece here has quite a bit of damage, very likely the cause of contact with the desiccant agent in that little packet. And as you move toward the outside sheet, you see a decrease in that, but still it's been affected. So after about 100, 110 years, You'd expect something, but surprisingly, there are areas that have not been affected at all that could possibly still be used. Anyway, this is an interesting show of 12 sheets. Quite a cachet, quite a find, Rob. I'm, in, I'm impressed. So it's all assembled here, and basically the prize are the 12 sheets of black Japine platinotype printing paper. And this is it. And... Just to recap, it came in this large tin. As you can see, quite well corroded. And you can see what it probably looked like originally. <clears throat> then within that, we had another cylinder with the platinotype, as it says here, black Japine platinotype paper. It had a special little top with a little opening mechanism that required, which didn't work, as you saw earlier. And we have the outer wrapping paper, the interleaving paper, again, leading us to the platinum print and basically all the really good stuff. And I don't want to forget, but this is the desiccant material that you saw earlier, and it's the cause of much of the staining, which you saw earlier as well. So basically, this is the entire package. This is the prized object that photographers back then uh, loved to print on, roughly from 1890 to 1920. And this piece 
probably comes from 1905 to 1910, maybe 1915, before World War I. And anyway, this is the entire package, and it's been really a very exciting uh, time, the last couple of hours, opening it up. And we now look forward to uh, sharing some of this with our colleagues around the U.S. and perhaps Europe, and writing up some uh, more papers on this, you know, doing some further studies and research and seeing what else it reveals. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you.